Okay, I'm Steve Mays from Solwise, and what I'm going to do now is a quick video going through the graphical user interface, setup interface for the uh, EN Station 5 um, Ingenious product. Now, the EN Station 5, uh, as you can see from here, is a dish shape type product. Uh, it's 5 gigahertz, uh, 11N 300 meg. And built into the front of here are two cross-polarized 19 dB antenna. And it's primarily designed uh, to form a point-to-point -point Wi-Fi bridge between two, uh, two remote buildings. So uh, LAN connection comes in the bottom. This is set up in WDS bridge mode, wirelessly bridges to another device at another building, and then back to a LAN cable. So you get basically a transparent LAN connection between the two buildings. So let's have a look. So the default address for the unit is 192.168.1.1. And let's just log in. Admin, admin, admin. Log in. Let's see what we've got. No, I'm not going to bother saving that. Right. So, comes up on the uh, basic status page. So, you can see the MAC addresses, the device name, the country. Okay, set up for. So, as you can see here, it's set up for the Netherlands. Um, land setting details and the setup for the Wi-Fi, which out of the box, it's set up as a client bridge using channel 40. So let's go through the configuration. So the first thing you're probably going to do is we'll jump straight to IP settings because the first job is going to be to give it an IP address uh, commensurate with your network that you're using it on. Now remember, if you're doing a point-to-point -point bridge link, then the IP address you choose for this unit has to basically be livable with the networks at both ends because you'll be producing a flat field IP base. So both ends will end up being on the same network. So choose an IP address for the bridge devices, uh, obviously a different, device, uh, different IP address for each bridge device, which suits the networks at both ends. Uh, obviously for this, I'm just gonna leave it on a standard 1.1 address. Now we can go back to operational mode operation mode now the first thing you're probably going to want to do is change the country so let's go down to the country settings now there are three options for UK uh, for those that don't know the way five gig bands work in the UK and the EU now is we have a UK uh, straight UK which is actually UK band A and that's for five gig indoor Wi-Fi this is an outdoor unit so you should not be using that uh, I'll jump straight down to UK band C. Now UK band C is outdoor, point to point bridging, but with a license. Don't even think about it. Um, although the license is, is a pittance, I can't remember, it's something stupid like 40 or 50 pound a year. The uh, channel band space in band C is woefully inadequate and uh, really not suitable for operation nowadays. It harks back to the good old days where we were all using you know 20 meg uh, 20 meg wide band channel uh, channel uh, Wi-Fi so forget about it now what you really need to be using is UK band B UPAN band UK band B gives you maximum number of channels and also allows you to use 30 dBm 1 watt EIRP power then we have operational mode now this does support a whole range of different modes such as access point client bridge and client router but it's a very directional piece of equipment. It really is designed really for point to point. Now this firmware does have other options because the firmware is also used in other products as well. But really all you're interested in re in reality is a WDS bridge setup. So one end is bridged transparently to the other end. So WDS bridge. And the only other thing on this screen that might have caught your attention is this box here called green. Green, when it's ticked, means lock the device down to only allow uh, UK band B legal RF power and channels. If you untick green, it gives you more flexibility to go off and use um, alternative uh, power levels and alternative channels. But of course, that would be illegal. And honestly, there is no reason to go wandering off into the world of illegality as far as RF power, etc. So just leave it tick for green. And then what we do is we save apply. 
Now it's just going to apply the settings. This is one of the few times that it will demand a, a, a reboot after applying the settings. Uh, most of the other screens from now on, you can um, build up a whole pile of changes and then just apply them in one block go at the end. Um, but this is quite a crucial setup, is the operational mode, so it needs to get this right because it affects everything else from now on, or a number of factors from now on. So we'll, we'll just wait while it applies those changes. Do, 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 do. 70, I think that's it, 70 then. 80, ow. Uh, 90. And 100. Let's just wait for it to re-log back in again. So now we're logged back in again, and now on the status page you can see we're on UK band B. And if I scroll to the bottom you can say we're using WDS Bridge. Okay, so let's go further through the settings. So as you can see, we set um, WDS Bridge. So anybody who uh, knows what knows what this means, WDS Bridge basically means that each end is linked to the MAC address of the opposite end. So if we go to WDS Link Settings, first thing is you can set up some form of security on the WDS Bridge if you want. I'm not convinced it's worth doing because with a WDS Bridge, the left hand unit will only bridge to the right so Wi-Fi security I think is a bit redundant but if you want you could actually set up some Wi-Fi security on that WDS bridge link and then we come down to the bottom here there are four entry boxes here each one can take a MAC address so what you're doing is you're putting the MAC address of the opposite unit that you want to bridge to okay and when you look at MAC addresses, make sure you choose the right MAC address. What you want is the wireless interface of the opposite unit, not its LAN interface, not its LAN port interface on the bottom of it. It's Wi-Fi interface. It's a Wi-Fi bridge protocol. So what you would do is you would go to here, you click enable and you put the MAC address of the opposite unit in here okay at the other end that needs to put the mac address of this end in so the two have the mac addresses of each other in them now i'm just going to put some i don't know uh, made up mac addresses in here it doesn't really matter because this is just a demo video and i'm going to click on accept Now we can go through to uh, wireless network once we've got our WDS entries in there. Now, this is when we set what operating mode we want to do it in. Uh, normally 11AN is fine and you want to be choosing 40 meg wide channels because that gives you the maximum throughput. Uh, now, in a WDS bridge mode, obviously both ends have to be operating on the same channel. So you need to choose a channel and these are all the 40 meg wide channels. You see how many channels you get in band B. You get a lot of them. And these are all 40 meg wide channels as well. So choose a channel which is hopefully not going to be interfered with anybody else. And make sure both ends are set up on the same channel. This is only a little test. I'm going to leave it on channel 100. Not going to worry about that. And if we go to a wireless advanced settings. Here we have things like data rate. My advice is leave it to auto. Transmit power, which is greyed out. That's because we ticked green mode earlier on. Um, don't worry about RTS, CTS. Now we have distance. Um, this parameter allows the devices to tune their timeouts to cope with the different distance between the actual units. Um, the default is one kilometer. So if you have the units two kilometers apart, just set this to two kilometers. Getting this right does mean that you end up with a the fastest and most stable link connection. And the other thing you can do down here, which is quite nice really, uh, is you can actually do traffic shaping per WDS link. Um, it looks nice, I must admit, it does look nice and looks really, really fantastically powerful and all that sort of thing. But this is designed as a point-to-point -point link. So it's single unit talking to single unit. So you're going to be using one WDS entry anyway. So the fact that you can split it between multiple WDS entries, which will never be used, doesn't really matter. So you'll probably end up leaving that disabled all the time and never using it. 
So that's the main settings. So done all that right. If you've done all that right, you've got a link. Final thing that I need to point out on the configuration is this thing up here called save reload colon four. Now I don't know if you noticed, but every time I did a change, that value there changed as well. Now what that means is the changes that I've been done so far when I've been saving them, I've been saving them into the configuration, but I haven't been applying them into the configuration. So they're saved, but not applied. In order to apply them, I have to go to this save reload and then click on save and apply. So it's now going to take those four changes that I've done and actually now apply them. Until you've done that, the device won't work the way you think it will. It'll still be using the old settings stored in it. It's amazing how many support phone calls you get from people saying, oh, I've changed this and it won't do it. And when I reload it, the changes are, stored, are lost and all that sort of thing. It's because they haven't gone along, 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 and gone along, gone along, and done the save reload. You need to actually say zero. When it says zero, that means all the changes that you've saved into it have then been successfully applied. So what it's doing now is it's now applying you to those changes. So we'll be up to 70 odd, 80 odd, 90 something, and bingo. <clears throat> Uh, so that's that done. So now we've got WDS bridge link set up. Well, the configuration set up. Obviously, there's not bridging to anything, but the configuration done and it kind of applied. And you can see it now says save reload zero. So other minor features that I can show in the GUI where well, you've got the usual things like you can set change the username and password for administration. You can back up and restore the settings and reset the factory faults. You've got the capability to do a uh, regular auto reboot, um, firmware upgrade options. Uh, you can set the time of the device or internet time if you wanted to. Uh, what else is worth looking at? You've got the usual thing of a log, um, usual ping, that sort of thing. Uh, ping and trace route. There's also a speed test on here. I have found the speed test uh, functions or features built into these bridge units, not just this one, but all the other range of bridge units uh, that I've played around with. I found these speed test program, uh, speed test built in routines to be very, very inaccurate. If you want to do a speed test properly, what you need to do is run a speed test program like iPerf, iPerf 3 and run that on a PC on the network at each end and set the iPerf 3 up to actually do multiple stream speed test. Uh, if you do that between the PCs, that will give you the most accurate true throughput speed for the actual data link. Uh, I find invariably if you run these speed tests actually built into the units, you end up with a very, very inaccurate figure. Uh, what else can I show you? I think that's basically it. That's that's the gist of what I was going to show you. Oh, the other thing I was going to say, um, up here we have this thing called WDS link list. So uh, what this does is it tells you the status of the WDS link. So this is saying this is the MAC address we're trying to link to and the link is obviously down. Um, if there was a valid connection that would show up and it would give you a signal strength. Now you have to make sure obviously that both units, that's the, the uh, unit to the left and the unit to the right, both bridging units, say link status is up. Um, it is possible to have a link going one way and not the other way. And the only time you ever sort of see that sort of thing is if you have not correctly put in the MAC address. So you may have put the MAC address in such that A can see B, but B can't see A. So if you ever see that effect, it's because you haven't got the MAC address set entered correctly into the WDS link in, uh, uh, settings. Um, anyway, that's it. That's the EN Station 5. Uh, nice little uh, bridge unit, um, ideal for bridging. Well, basically anything from uh, one to sort of five or potentially more kilometers, depending on what through a throughput you want. 
but nice stable piece of kit um, we sell a lot of them and it's the sort of product I like because it goes out and then you never hear any gripey phone calls from the customer it does what it says on the tin thank you very much